In a world cloaked in shadows, where the line between reality and myth blurs, four intrepid adventurers stand at the precipice of destiny. Welcome to the realm of the Red Sphere Guild. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the journey of the Guild of the Red Sphere. This is session two. Um, it's fairly important to go through session one because it does the setup for the story so far. However, as a bit of a quick recap, they have found one sphere, a sphere that they believe is fire based. They know that they need to collect a series of spheres and then they should be able to rid the world of evil. As they were going through and looking into some rumors that were coming about, they found one golden totem. It was a clear representation of one of their spheres and drawn into the sphere there was a small um, image, a, a logo that could be somewhat interesting and it's this one that we have on the screen here. It appears that there are nine separate spheres that they need to bring together in order to clear out the scourge that is now affecting the world. As they go through their story they start to realise that these monsters that they're fighting, these rumours that are appearing, aren't actually that normal. Whilst they know that they wanted to be adventurers, whilst they knew that there was some evil within the world, they didn't realise just how much. As a result, they decided that this could be an acceptable level of monsters, maybe this is normal. But coming through their journeys and going through their towns, they start to get rumblings that something is going on, but they don't quite know what. They've been given one final rumour from Lord Vish. Lord Vish is the owner of a town, sorry, is the previous owner of a town called Baug. Baug is a major city within our story um, and as a result is a fairly important place that we'll come back to on many instances. But he's trying to take back the city from a series of religious zealots and some military control as well. There is a library here that they're trying to take back from the military control. Lord Vish is able to combine a series of different um, parties together as such and instead of going direct to the library he has an alternative suggestion because one of our heroes is a dwarf Erthor they decide instead to go to the north gate now the north gate is somewhat important because the north gate is the boundary of where the dwarves physically reside and he hopes that by opening up the north gate he may be able to curry favor with the dwarves in the north as a result, we go through the North Gate, slowly taking away the knights and the military controller is there, and they do indeed flush out absolutely everything. And it appears that the dwarves are somewhat okay with the idea of um, allying themselves with Lord Vish. Yes, whilst they are not amorous about the idea, they're more than happy to do so. But there's one other thing that they also find, apparently the librarian that is trapped in the library is now deep within the guts of the library itself. She's actually physically in the lower levels where all the tomes are researching information specifically about the sphere. They wonder exactly how Lord Vish was able to give the information to this girl considering that he couldn't go into the library. However, they pass it off as maybe a, a friendly bit of information passed between some guards here and there. But there is also one other thing that they can do right now, and that's they can go to Hawksall, the final rumour that they had. As they go through Hawksall, it is indeed a ruin. There are um, ash covering absolutely everything. It's clear that some type of awful thing has happened here. However, as they make their way through the town, they finally get to a singular building. In this building, they find the text that's also on the sphere that they've also been able to find previously. They're not able to fully identify exactly what it is, but they know that something relating to their sphere and something relating to this is connected in some way. Obviously, they just gain their coin and they slowly move back to their guild. However, they have a bit of a problem. As they were in the guild, someone has stolen from them, specifically 168 gold pieces. They make their way through the farmyards and the fire fields uh, outside the city, and they slowly find the thief's hideout. It sadly uh, is apparent that Volar, our cleric, um, was unable to take the whole route, as she was taken out close to the end. It means that Urthor had to take her back and only left two of our adventurers going forward. But finally they were able to go to the feast hideout and they were able to gain their coin back. And then with this, they moved all the way back to Balg. They could finally go into the library and do everything they wanted to do. The idea here was simple. Our adventurers would go down into a small um, underground 
tunnel in order to flush out the library itself as the dwarves and the um, men loyal to Lord Vish would physically take the library from the top down. This would hopefully allow somewhat of a bit of a secret exit uh, and entrance in order to be able to gain the curry of the librarian herself. They purged through this library and they didn't fi find the librarian. Marina was her name. She was somewhat powerful and as a result she did a lot with her power. But what was particularly interesting is that she was in fact Lord Vish's daughter. Lord Vish's daughter knew because um, there were some powerful musings, shall we say, within the uh, city herself that she knew something was going to happen. So she started investigating and finding out what was going on. It was during this time that the library was taken over by the military and as a result Lord Vish needed to get her daughter back. But the daughter, refusing to leave without knowing exactly what's going on, decided to delve deep into the um, archives, the Forbidden Library. They were able to flush the Forbidden Library out, but specifically there was one bit of information that she was able to find. A single scroll. Within that scroll there was an image that was exactly the same as the previous one that was found on the Golden Totem, and there was a series of information written there. What was particularly interesting is that Marina, learned in her ways, could understand exactly what this scroll said. It was written in Demonic's runes, and it tells a somber story. Once every 666 years, portals will open and release evil across the world of the living. It will start with a small scale portals, closing quickly, quite possibly as we have been seeing previously, before a single main portal will open under the Basin City. We think this is perhaps the buried city near Hoskell, but we aren't 100% sure. But we do know in order to combat this, there's nine tribes with nine magical spheres that are once combined to close the portal. And once again, it will be shut for another 666 years. Of these nine spheres, they know that one of them is fire, and this was given to the humans. They suspect the one that they hold. One was water given to the mermen, one is earth to the lizard men, one is nature to the giants, air to the snake men, arcane to the elves, and runic to the dwarves. And there's two others, demonic and divine, but sadly because this scroll has been damaged, they weren't, exactly at, they weren't exactly able to work out where these last two were, but they had a plan. First of all, they needed to find the location of the demon, the demonic and the divine spheres. That to find the water sphere, the nature sphere, the earth sphere, the air sphere, the arcane sphere, the runic sphere, the divine sphere, the demonic sphere. And then they had to spread the word across the tribes of the living, unite them together to take on the armies of the dead. They had to find the words and then finally they had to close the portal. They got home to Gamli and they decided that if they truly were going to be taking on the the death and destruction that would come from these portals. Maybe Gamli wasn't exactly the type of place that was prepared for the upcoming extinction event. So they invested 1,700 gold pieces into some soldiers, some ravens, some armor, some shields, some bows, some barricades, and also some fixing some walls up just to make sure that everything was perfect. And as a result, they decided to work out what to do next. And they decided due to the fact that one of their own was with the, uh, desert people from the east they knew that this is probably likely to be where the air sphere was so they decided to take on their story and go with ashton in hopes of finding the air sphere they knew that het bai was the main city within a des desert this is where ashwin directly came from himself and as a result they decided to trek across this desert without water without preparation and they only just survived as they mained into the city Het Bai was filled with winding streets, it was complicated, but there was an interesting air in the world. They know there was a few places that there might be this possible sphere, but they were also very much aware that there wasn't anything but humans here. Apparently the lizard men were meant, sorry, the snake men were meant to be the ones with the air sphere, however they clearly weren't here. They decided to speak to Ashwin's father, who decided that it might be interesting to speak to the city's elders. Maybe they will be able to help work out where the sphere was. It could be in the Pyramid of Nebank. It could be in the Itzi Zugurat. But they knew it was somewhere. They just weren't really sure where. They decided to speak to these elders, but it took a while in order to be able to set things up. So they decided to look into the help board and 
they find a simple but easy job that they think that they can take on. The 200 gold piece reward to go to the city of Kazmut and clear them of um, some ne'er-do-wells as such that have stolen a magic sword. As they moved into Kazmuk, it was quite clear that the goblins had set up a camp in the desert and were hoarding loot. They took them on, slowly seeking throughout the whole village, and they were able to find the sword indeed. As they made their way back, they decided to do somewhat of a, a race. It was a bit of a simple one, but they decided to have fun as such. It was here that they finally got back to the city where Ashwin's father paid them for their duty, and they decided that Ziggurat was possibly the place to go. The elders have advised them that Ziggurat was the place that they might find this sphere. As they went through the whole Ziggurat, they didn't find much. It was somewhat of an empty choice, but they did find a ghost dog that was able to help them out. They decided to take this ghost dog back, and whilst they did fill their coffers with a thousand gold pieces, this was somewhat not exactly what they wanted. However, it was when they got back, they finally got a view with the elders themselves, and they decided to point them into a spring somewhat deep into the desert themselves. They decided to go, thinking that this might be somewhat of a lead that they would want to see, but something that quite possibly wouldn't lead anywhere. It was here that they found the snake men. The snake men were the ones who were meant to hold the severe, and as a result, they knew that maybe this was exactly where they needed to be. They met a man called Aethoth, and his people were there because they were flying across the desert, trying to survive as such in the world of man. They knew that there was something that wasn't exactly going to help them out. However, they heard their story, and they spoke together, and they realised, yes, we know where the sphere is. They wrote them a small map, as you can see here, the X is where they currently are, and they had to make their way all the way down to a pyramid. This pyramid, deep within the desert itself, was across the um, sea that had dried up, and they knew that this is what they needed to find. But there was a small place that they said that they should go to, and within this small place they should find a small message. This is the message that they found, but at this time, because Marina wasn't with them, they weren't able to translate it. But they did move through the desert, they'd slowly go through until they found the uh, pyramid itself. They climbed up to the top and there they found not much. Instead, what they found is a message that the Rot Hill Gang, the black hearted um, owners of this land, had gone through the pyramid before them and they had taken everything that was there. And they knew that that included the sphere. As a result, as they moved through this um, pyramid, they decided this was where we're going to go next. Aethos came with them, and as a result, they took on the town itself. They cleared out the gang, and finally, there in a small box, did they find the yellow sphere, the air sphere. As they got back to town, they decided to develop a small guild, um, and this guild house itself took on the name of the Yellow Sphere Guild. These people decided to learn with them, um, to inform them of the language that was here. They knew um, demonic and as a result they taught them the words, the alphabet. The previous message that they previously received in a small, um, uh, like a small um, desert cave, they were able to translate. And simply it said, a power shared is a power halved. As they moved back into town, Marina theorised that maybe some of this was something to do with the major eight races. Yes, there were some spreading of the different spheres. They knew most of the different races had spheres, and therefore it made sense that maybe the one other major race, the Centaurs, could have also had the other sphere. They knew that the Mermen and the Centaurs, the sorry, the Centaurs were deeply woven together with an alliance a long time ago and as a result they found that there might be something going on. However, that was the only thing, sorry, that wasn't the only thing Marina had. She also had another bit of information. The island of Samora might be the place that they should go to next. As a result, as they were going across their boat waiting for it to be finalised, they got another message from Lord Vish, something else within Bow to do, so they cleared out the chapel in the hopes that this might help them further. However, they got back to Gamli and they decided 
now or never. So with all their money invested in the boat, they decided to um, purchase a few more weapons, look for some recruits, and then go deep within the sea and find their next quarry. And it's here that we'll end the next session. Sorry, we'll end this session. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next session.